Using burnt sienna, cerulean blue and a bit of white, I'm just building up the background colours, the underpainting to the deer. Then I'll work in more detail over them later. Now we've got our deer formed, we've just got to work these colours up. I want to be able to get rid of the white background as quickly as possible, form an effect of light, and then compare one colour to another, gradually building up from my misty backgrounds with the rollers to my more stronger trees and branches in the foreground with brushes. So here we have our standard set of acrylics I've been using before now and I'll put these with a brush into the palette here and mix them up and then use this nice little roller and we'll make these effects for the background of the uh, woodland. Now, I don't mind if I come over my deer slightly here and there. Got to these colours up. That's it. I'm going to gradually work up something like warmer tints of things. Right, now you want to start painting all these twigs and branches in the background. Get the feeling of these trees in. So uh, I'm going to carry on with a Velvet. Start to make some of these greys, very similar greys to the deer in fact. I'm going to link the whole thing together. Just about got the light worked out. Mm. That's oneness with this light that's going on. Right now, I'm going to move from the filbert down to a, a round. It's number four, because I want to start painting in more of these branches. So again, back to our same colour of the burnt sienna and the blue. Remember that twigs always grow from thick to thin. They never grow thick, thin, thick, thin, or thin, thicker. Unless you've got something wrong with the branch itself or the tree where there's a cancer cause. And this is where you get those wonderful things called burrs. And the burr is a cancerous growth that makes the tree knobbly in one area. And when it's sliced up, there's a most wonderful grain and figuring inside. And that's what they use when they make these lovely um, veneered tables and things, and you've got these beautiful swirling patterns in the, in the, in the grain and the wood. You get the feeling of the woodland. And we shall build up over this, as I say, build up in layers. I'm going to go a little bit darker, I've just had a little bit of black to it. I don't use black in much as you know, but I just want to get, be a bit darker here. Thanks to these trees. Now we're going to move on to painting oils over the acrylics, which will give us a much brighter, heavier mixture, much more vibrant. We're going to be using some sponge at first, and then I'll move on to my little bit brushes and texture and so on with those. I shall use the sponge for a little bit of that, and then come down to fine brushes.
doing up all of these very light creams and light greens and very pale blues as well into this. That's coming in across here as well. They're just so many beautiful colours. To go darker now and I'm going to start adding some burnt sienna. Just down here sunlight coming through those trees like water splashing from a waterfall through and across them. Keep working these colours up even over the tree where it's necessary. The texturing up here. Now let's bring some more warms into it. We'll take some uh, rose and start to add the much warmer roses colours into here which will bring out the colours I've already got in the deer more. Just so many colours going on in here. You can drag the sponge as well as push it to get these effects. But even darker now. So I can take some burnt umber, a little touch of my ultramarine blue, and let's start to make some of these really dark textures down here. It really is a lot darker down here because we've got all these light leaves to put in here as well. I think it's time to start on our, our greens now. I'm going to come back into this with brush later. There's a lot of work in making the colours and building this sort of thing up. Although it seems a very complicated painting, and in some ways it is, we're making it easier by using these techniques of building up layers. And it comes down to almost pure blues at times amongst these greens. This is a uh, cobalt blue I'm putting on now. Some of these darks brought back out when I put lighter colours actually in here because the sky needs to glow through again and I've lost it a bit so I'm going to have to put some much lighter colours back in shortly and that will make these leaves seem darker. Right, let's start to go towards the lighter green of the leaves now. We've got some wonderful colours going on in those. Bit of lemon yellow with the emerald now. To really get some bright sunlight. Just flicking them on, nice clean colour. Trouble is if you don't do it gently the colour will lift from underneath and spoil it. work up these umbrellas, these parasols, these skirts of leaves coming around here. It's beautiful to be able to use these pure colours now at this stage as well. Really good fun. I'll take some viridian and white. Make a very, very light green. Very acidic green, amongst which I'm going to put some cerulean in a minute. I like that is very very cool green to make the warm green seem warmer. Little strokes of leaves, almost every leaf being painted in, but only an impression of them. We aren't trying to be exact, of course. Start to get a three-dimensional effect with the strengths of warm and cool greens, almost standing out off the canvas, which is what we're after. Let's take some pure. Cerulean. Just see if we've got any cooler blues up and around in this area. I think we might have, yeah. Coming through. Now, let's go back in with some of those lights in the sky that I talked about earlier. A really clean brush. And we'll make up a very, very light purple. Ever such a light little touch of pink into it. A little touch of blue. And we'll just see about the light shining through behind these trees here. I want it too warm. And of course it's reflecting over some of these wet leaves. Right, I'm deliberately going to mix that cadmium orange and uh, 
white now to really go for something a little lighter up there. Get the effect of these light shining through. So, so several very different paintings I've done for you in mood and atmosphere with the pheasants and the snow and the And this is one of the beauties of oil paint, isn't it? The fact that we can put this impasto, this beautiful impasto colouring in here and play with it. It's such a lovely texture. But up until now I've been putting mediums and lights and I'm going to work through to the darks. I'm going to go to a little bit lighter still and really put in some very, very light colours of the uh, sunlight gleaming through behind here. So this is lemon yellow and a little bit of white to give a cream using the stippling of the brush. Because I want to get this feeling of beautiful sunlight reflecting down through autumn leaves. So it's becoming quite a high key painting now, isn't it? High key meaning very light and high in light in tone. And I suspect that some of them might just be catching highlights on the, the grasses as well. As the sunlight comes through it'll probably be just catching the edge of these grasses. So let's just try and flick in, even with a bigger brush. I want some much, much stronger oranges into the foreground here. So I'm going to mix up some chrome yellow and a little bit of cadmium orange and let's really start to plonk in some very strong oranges here put a little bit of white with that as well just to brighten it up a bit see so if we can find some of these much stronger colours in the foreground which will make the other colours seem in comparison softer the chances are it's going on elsewhere as well so we've got it on our brush we'll just move it around into other areas and the whole thing becomes richer and stronger all the time if we just tickle these colours on we shouldn't be losing we shouldn't be mixing them from below they should be staying on the surface I'm using a bit more colour on them as well to bring them out we only lose it, use a limited palette before I remember we just use burnt sienna and uh, some cerulean and a little bit of um, ultramarine later but we actually now want to start getting a bit more mauve into these and that mauve is the opposite in the colour cycle to the purple is to the um, yellow so that's going to also help our colours stand out more just blending it over at the moment standing out more. So I'm going to have to work into them more yet, but just to get me going, to prove the point that the colours can change things so dramatically. I'm going to give it a pure ultramarine down here to bring the cools out more. The paint's getting very heavy, I'm getting very impasto in this particular painting. Some more blues amongst that, so I'm going to use pure ultramarine down there. smaller brush. I really want to make up some much lighter colours. Start to feel these, these lights even more up there yet than I have done. Take a very very light pink and see if I can uh, get the sky to work with that because
we are again this morning and we're getting well on with our painting of the deer. And in fact, we're down to the final details now. I think I'll start this morning with a little bit of cerulean blue to my picture because I want to just make the cools a little stronger here. Just put a little bit of this very light blue into these reflections of light from the sky. Just the odd leaf here and there to make it look as if we've got, I guess there, some sort of rhododendron bush going on there. Let's see if we can use that light on the antlers of the deer just a little bit. Because I'm not showing as well as I like yet. I don't know if it's going to work or not. There we go. Just a bit. Just on the tips of the antlers. I think you know we're almost there. A few little light bits elsewhere, but not much more. And there we are, I think. That's all we need to do on this one, really. 